Hey, this is Paige from Mosaic Moments, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to create journaling on the computer for your layouts. And today I'm just gonna be showing a basic spread. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is the first layout I have. And as you can see, I have a blank four by four square in the middle. So for any kind of layout, whether it's basic or with a specialty die, you just wanna pick a spot on your layout you would like to put the journaling, and really it could be anywhere you want. So if I wanted to put it here, instead of placing a photo, I'd put journaling there. So really the placement of the journaling is up to you. Sometimes, I don't know why I like to put it in the middle, it can be a great focal point. It puts more attention on the whole story. I mean, here I have the crabs, but I didn't have, you know, a real standout photo for this layout. So I think journaling was good for the middle for me. So then that way you the story gets attention because there's more to the story than what this layout is showing. So that's why I want to place some journaling on here because as I said there's more to say than what's in the photos and before you print on your computer what you want to do is get the measurements of the dies and the die measurements are written on the inserts you receive but you can also take your ruler any ruler you have and measure it all right so after you choose the spot you want to place the journaling on your layout and you have your measurements of how large of a space you want it to fill, you can go on to your program. So for this video, I'm using Microsoft Word because I figure most of you probably have Microsoft Word. And just so you know, I'm filming this in 2021. You may have an older version, you may have, if you're watching this uh, after this video gets made, you maybe have a newer version. Uh, some of the things change around. It's generally speaking the same steps, but sometimes the program changes around. So, but hopefully no matter what version you are using, you get the idea of how to create the journaling. So what you're going to do is, right now it's on the home screen, and you want to go to insert, and you are going to go over here where it says text box, and I just picked draw text box, and it makes this little plus sign on your uh, instead of your mouse, or arrow for the mouse, and just drag it however, you know, you don't have to make it a specific size quite yet. And over here it has height and width. And that is where you're going to change it to fit into the, um, this is where you're going to fit, this is where you're going to change the measurement so it fits on the size you want. And I know I want it to be 4 by 4 inches. So, so remember I'm making this a layering size, it's not the size that fits on the grid. All right, so I have my box here, and then I'm gonna go back to home. And when you click inside the box, you should have this bar come up and the type symbol. And everyone, all of you are probably gonna wanna do a different kind of journaling possibly, but for a, a lot of times, especially when I have one journaling spot on the page, like I will for this layout, and I have a big box like this, I like to add a title with my journaling. So to add a title, I'm going to come over to this section and click the center text and add my title. Okay, and it's not the font I want, so of course you're going to come over here and pick the font you want. And generally for the title I want it to be a bit bigger, so you can come over here to the size and make it however large you want. Let's see, I think I may want it even a little bit bigger. You can always change it later. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit enter. And for my other text, I'm going to not have it be centered. I'm gonna put it over on 
the left side and then I'm going to type it out. Although, just so you know, if you decide to use a font like the script font, I highly recommend only using it for your title. It's really hard to read if you have it for a whole paragraph. So really these kind of fonts are really meant for a title. If you want to write a whole paragraph, I recommend using a much simpler font. And I'm going to be using one called Gotham. I need to go find it. But any of the typical fonts, you know, like Helvetica, Times New Roman, you know, any of those. I mean, I don't usually use those, but any of those common kind of fonts. Well, Gil Sands, um, they work much better for a paragraph. Actually, I think I passed the one I wanted. <laughs> Just so you know, if you like, and I want this to be smaller as well. Okay, let's see. Usually 12 is the biggest I'll go. If I go small, I'll go as small as the size 10 if I need to add more room. All right, so now I'm going to write in. I have to move my keyboard here. All right, and this is where you write in your paragraph, and it'll fit right. It'll fit right into the the text box. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out what I'm gonna say, and be back in a moment because I don't think you need to watch <laughs> me write the entire thing. So I'll be back in one second. All right, so now I have my paragraphs here, and I just wanted to go over a little bit about the spacing. So what you can do is highlight, maybe I'll highlight the whole thing. And I like to come, I believe it's this one, yes. This one right here helps you space a little more. I find at one point it can look a little bit tight, and then there's one point 15 although I think it looks like it just <laughs> kind of made it a little bit too big there anyway so I just did it between the title and this first line and I also this is obviously a personal preference but you can see how the lines are all uneven around here so you can fix that by highlighting just a paragraph and then click on this symbol here it says justify and then it'll make them go completely across your square here so I really like that option because <laughs> I just like it when my journaling is fills in the square and let's see I'm not a big fan of when one word is below the paragraph. That is totally my designer mind. So what I can do is add a word or take away a word. Let me see. Maybe I'll say in town. I know where I live. <laughs> and I can say plan to go back again. All right, so I fixed those, and I'm going to have one more line. I'm just showing you this as an option. Sometimes I'll, I, I'll show you two things. Sometimes I like to put the date. Let's see, I think it was August 20th. Well, no, never mind. It was 18th. I'm going, I wouldn't keep it. Well, I can, sometimes I keep it the same font as up here, but I make it a little bit smaller. So that's one option. Sometimes I put the date up like that. And sometimes I like to put it at the bottom. And then what I do to, so you can see it, I don't know. I don't know why I like to do this actually, but sometimes I like to shift it so it's on the left side of the block here. So adding the date's really important to me. I like to remember exactly when it happened. Okay, so let's see. I'm just making sure. 
that. This is space the way I want it. Yep. Okay. And if there was more room, like I said, I like to have it more space, but I guess I could keep it, but I want the date to fit in there because I don't have the date anywhere else on my layout. All right, so now I have my block. So once you're all done, so if you want to move around the box, make sure the type symbol is gone and there's this little arrow symbol. And I prefer to make more than one. I'm gonna see what's with this, okay. I don't know, sometimes it's telling me it's a misspelling or grammar issue. But I recommend whenever you're making journaling because sometimes when you go to cut it, it messes up. And so what you can do is make sure this block is highlighted and click option, hit down option on your keyboard. I'm using a Mac. It's probably a little bit different on Windows and PC. So what I do is make sure this is clicked on, hit option, and then I you're able to drag it down. So I like having more than one in case you mess up when you after you print it and start making it. All right, and then I'm going to show you two options as far as what to do with this outline. If so for this, I'm probably going to hand cut it. And when I hand cut the journaling, I like to keep the lines and then I kind of know what to cut along. And so for this one, we're going to go to shape format and I'm going to click this symbol. It's called the shape outline. Click the arrow and I'm going to make it a light gray instead of black, maybe even lighter than that. Actually, I went back to home. Um, I think that'll be good. And I don't think on windows sometimes, some programs let you make the line thinner, but I'll leave it like this for now. If you're planning to cut with the die, I don't recommend keeping the outline at all. So how you get rid of that is go to the same spot. You go to shape format, click on this arrow and say no outline. All right, so that's really easy. Anyway, now that I have this finished, you can or once you get all your journaling figured out, go ahead and print it and then you can cut it and place it on your layout. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I made the journaling as I just showed you and I went and printed journaling out. I have two spots and I wanted to show you both ways. So this one, since I left the box, I'm gonna be hand cutting that. If you're not hand cutting using the dies, I recommend obviously to take out the box. And if you are going to cut with the die, so this is the one that fits the grid. I'm gonna put it on here and it looks really good. I mean, I'm not, I'm planning to put it over the Navy square, but you can see it's always nice for just a design tip to have white space around your writing. You want to give it some breathing room, and I think this looks pretty good. That's the one that fits the grid. I looked at the layering size, but it is too tight for the layering size that fits on the grid, so I wouldn't do that one. But obviously, if you wanted to use the measurements of this, you would have measured this out and made sure this could fit in there. This could fit the size from the layering bundle, though, so that would be a good option if I wanted to cut it. And so basically you would eyeball it until your journaling is all centered the way you would like. And then I definitely recommend using washi tape. Sorry, I'm trying to get this off so I show you. So definitely use washi tape as best you can. You may even want to use more than one piece. And then I would cut around here and roll it through the machine and you're done. So that's really nice if you want to use dies. Or you can hand cut, which I am going to show you. First, I'm just going to cut out, just to make the paper a little bit smaller, I'm going to cut out this bottom section. And if you don't plan to use it, if you're making multiple pages, 
you know, that would be great. Some of you probably have, you know, multiple children or grandchildren and you can reuse the journaling for another layout for if you're making the same page for multiple people. I also recycle the paper or use the back of it if I don't plan to use it. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how to cut this real quick. It's pretty easy, especially since the lines are already there. All right, I'm gonna place this so you can see it in the camera. So I'm just gluing a little bit to keep it on the mat. This is Mosaic Moments cutting mat, by the way. It's super, super nice. And what I do is I take my ruler and place it right next to that line. So if a little, if a little bit of the line shows up after you cut it, it's not the end of the world. So just place the ruler so it's just barely showing, but you, sh you should be able to see the line right next to the ruler. Alrighty. And then I'm just going to keep turning it around. My font's really, really tight on this. And I do prefer to print this multiple times in case I mess up and need to redo it. Okay. Just place a ruler next to it. Don't place it on top of the lines. You should be able to see the line right next to the edge of your ruler. All right, I'm going to do it one more time. Another way if you want to really cover lines is if you have some something like chalk ink or stamping ink, you might be able to cover it. So let's see. I got a little bit. My paper is really dark, though, so I don't think you'll be able to see the lines. I mean, you can barely see them around the edges, but they might be okay over my navy here. So I'm going to put this on and make sure there's glue in the corners in the middle and then place it right in the center like you would with a photo right here. So I think that looks pretty good. I mean, I have it on a dark paper, so I can't see the printed lines very well. So, and you don't even have to have the lines if you're hand cutting either. I just like, I pers that's personal preference. So anyway, I think this looks really nice. I would probably <laughs> fix it so this wasn't so tight up here, but that is okay. So anyway, so that's how you create the journaling for a basic layout. All right, we have reached the end of today's demo. This is the final layout with my journaling. I hope this video was very informative for all of you and that this gives you a better idea on how to create journaling on your computer for whenever you want to print it out. Don't forget to watch part two of this video basically where I show you how to create the journaling for level three dies. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time.